In this video, we'll be covering part of B4.2 on ecological niches, and we'll be focusing on nutritional niches. So when I say a niche, what I'm referring to is an ecological niche, and that is the role that a species plays in its ecosystem. And that can depend on a few different things. It could depend on what it eats and how it gets its food. It could depend on its zone of tolerance, and that's because the zone of tolerance can determine what kind of habitat it can utilize. And finally, it depends on how it interacts with other species in the ecosystem. So we'll be talking about a few different niches here. I want to go over some keywords that will help you remember these other terms, right? So obligate means like obligation. You have no choice. Facultative refers to kind of like having a choice, or at least that's how I like to think about it. Aerobic means with oxygen and then anaerobic without oxygen. So obligate aerobes are organisms that must have oxygen. Okay, so this is going to be all animals and all plants. Okay, all plants need oxygen as well. Obligate anaerobes are things that cannot be exposed to oxygen. They can only live in anoxic environments. Okay, so this is like the bacteria that causes tetanus or methanogenic archaea arche bacteria. Okay, those must be in anaerobic environments. Unlike the bacteria that live on our skin, they're constantly exposed to oxygen. Then you have the real weird ones, these facultative anaerobes. They can thrive in both um, oxic or aerobic or anaerobic or anoxic environments. So I've included these terms here and you're gonna find that they're used interchangeably, which is why I put them in here. So oxic refers to aerobic and anoxic is the same as anaerobic. They mean the same thing. But these are gonna be things like yeast or E. coli that they will do different things in those environments, but they can utilize both of them. So you'll often hear people from different branches of biology referring to the same organisms by a different name. So some like cell biologists might call these organisms autotrophs. They produce their own food. And some ecologists might call them primary producers. This is the role that they play in an ecosystem. But these are just names for photosynthetic organisms, okay? So photosynthetic organisms can include things like plants, algaes, and even different types of photosynthetic prokaryotes like bacteria. And what they all have in common is this process of photosynthesis. And that is turning light energy or solar energy into chemical energy in the form of things like carbohydrates. Okay, so again, it's not just plants. It also includes algae and some bacteria. Unlike autotrophs that can kind of produce their own food, heterotrophs are organisms that must eat their food. They are consumers, not producers. Now, all animals are heterotrophs, and most of them have what we call holozoic nutrition. Not all of them, but most of them. And that means that whole pieces of food are eaten and are digested internally. So let's say I'm going to eat an apple, okay? I'm gonna put that food into my mouth, and then it's going to pass through my gut. And a few different things are going to happen, one of which is digestion, okay? So we have ingestion which is eating something, digestion is the chemical breakdown uh, into smaller molecules, okay? Now, I'm also going to be able to absorb some of those smaller molecules. So into my bloodstream, we're going to get absorption of some of these smaller molecules, not all of them are going to be able to be digested and absorbed, however. So the leftover bits of food or molecules that cannot be absorbed are going to pass out through the anus, if it has an anus, as waste, okay? And so we call that egestion. The one word that I haven't touched on yet is assimilation. That, mu that means becoming part of the cells and tissues. So again, we have ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation would mean using that in our cells, and then egestion of any waste that cannot be digested or absorbed. So heterotrophs, things like me. <laughs> Autotrophs, things like algae. What about a mixotroph? 
I love this word because it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a mixture. These are organisms that can gather nutrients and energy in uh, both autotrophic and heterotrophic ways. So this means that they're going to be consuming things in addition to producing their own food using photosynthesis. Now we have a couple of different types. We have obligate mixotrophs, that means that they must use both methods. And then we have facultative mixotrophs, so that means that they can choose. They can use one method or another depending on what's in, available in the environment. So this euglena may choose to use photosynthesis if it's nice and light, okay, and it can get plenty of sunlight and the temperature and everything is just right, but it may choose to be a heterotroph if there's an abundance of food to be consumed. Now what we need to keep an eye on here is again the relationship between form and function. What adaptations do things have that make them successful in their environment? So we're gonna take a look at something called a saprotroph. Now saprotrophs are a type of decomposer. So decomposers can either be saprotrophic or they can be um, considered to be detritivores. Detritivores are things that digest matter internally. So what we were just talking about, like holozoic nutrition. All right, now saprotrophs cannot do that. They digest matter externally. And in fact, that's the big key word you should remember here with um, saprotrophs is external digestion. So they're doing the same thing. They're, they're using things like enzymes to break large molecules down into smaller ones and they then absorb them. It's just that's happening on the outside of their bodies. So things like this fungus and some bacteria, what they can do is they can spray digestive enzymes on things. Those enzymes break down those large molecules and then this fungi can absorb the, the results of that digestion, those small molecules. Okay, so um, still a decomposer, just a different mode of nutrition. Now, one of the groups that shows a lot of variety in its nutritional mood mode are those archaea. So this may be a little bit of a review for you. Archaea is one of the three domains of life. It's a prokaryote, um, but it's actually more closely related to eukaryotes than it is to other bacteria. But anyways, this is what we're talking about here. And these archaea have three different ways to get their energy. So the gathering of energy is one of the functions that all living things have in common, these just have some interesting ways of doing it. So they can be heterotrophic, which means that they're consuming things, they're getting their energy from other organisms. Some of them are phototrophic, so absorbing light energy, they're doing photosynthesis, and others are chemotrophic, so they're oxidizing inorganic chemicals for their energy. And so there's just a lot of nutritional uh, modes represented here in this group um, to keep an eye on.